welcome back to a new video. Right now we are at Frankfurt uh, main train station because we're actually on holiday and those announcements are so I cannot do anything. It's a new week log. Alright, so sitting in the train now on the way back to Berlin because we were on vacation for 10 days. You probably didn't notice because we did like pre-production for the videos. But now, yeah, it's a Monday morning, traveling back from Frankfurt to Berlin. And uh, there should be an exciting week ahead, and that's why I decided to do a week lock once again. Meanwhile, it's one day later, and as you can see, I got my GTR finally back from paint shop. As you can see, some details are now yellow neon, and the rest is now like shiny black, like non-metallic black, just shiny black. I think it makes the car look really awesome, especially with the cage inside and everything see some of these like yellow details and right now I'm on the way from Berlin to Münster which is like 450 or almost 500 kilometers in west of Germany simply to bring it back to Bremler which is the company that is tuning all the GTRs basically here and uh, yeah they also did all the modifications on my car and I think since the last modification when I got the almost 1000 horsepower because it's now running 970 horsepower since then I was driving about I would say 6,000 kilometers finally made it uh, was a quite long journey also quite warm it's about 39 degrees Celsius right now but it's always worth a visit here so it's like GTR GTR uh, 300 ZX then another GTR 370 Z Nismo more GTRs yeah it's always pretty amazing probably the highest uh, GTR density you can find in Europe all right, so again, a few days later, uh, back at Grizzly. Sometimes people are always asking me what I'm even doing in my spare time, like not doing YouTube videos. So one more thing we did uh, is making these, I wouldn't call it liquid nitrogen containers, but pretty much like an entrance XOC container for entrance cards because we want to host like an entrance competition very soon for cheap graphics cards. That's why we also made them. And the goal was to have a simple and cheap container so you can get an easy entrance into XOC and just try the first time with a cheap card without breaking things or like a chance of wasting a lot of money. Like you wouldn't want to try this the first time on like a 3090. It's just, uh, yeah, the risk of breaking things would simply be too high so that we made 50 of these simple aluminum container and we aim for around 70 euro for just the container with all the mounting materials and stuff so we have them ready so that's one thing we did and then there is uh, one more thing because uh, in one of the more recent videos we were drilling a, I think it was a mounting bracket of a cooler and because it was like hardened steel it just didn't work out like you simply couldn't drill in it with just the hand drill we had like a very basic one and that was very frustrating and I thought that's yeah that's not the standards we have so we decided to get a proper drill and this one is like top of the top what you can get should be a very nice machine it uh, was just delivered so have to set it up there is also the uh, like the base to put it on we will mount it on there and then mount it into the ground so that's something I also want to do uh, these days and even just looking at this vice what a beautiful machine so there's one more thing I want to highlight or talk about quickly because you might have seen this on KitGoro's video that we are currently working with EK Waterblocks together on some direct dye cooling products mainly for all the leg and probably also for uh, Raptor leg afterwards and that's why we are currently working on a reliable deliter for all the leg I know that there are already deliters out there but they have a certain chance of damaging the CPU that's why we wanted to do our own approach we are quite far in the development uh, phase, so just some prototypes laying around. You can see some CPUs successfully deleted, some more than others. So you can also show there are some, there certainly are some casualties in testing. Like this one, we had some SMDs flying off, but everything is fixed now. We sent the working files already to EK, and they also sent some prototypes to us, which we can look at now.
We'll just do some dubbing for this part because I couldn't do it in English as well. We were invited for a Hetzner event. They had the 25th anniversary of their company basically hosting a big concert and they invited us to be a part of it. Apart from that it's very hot inside here right now because it's like 33 degrees Celsius outside, it's probably the same inside. But I spotted something very interesting because Hetzner seems to be extremely nice at doing table decorations. So that's the menu for today with like the food and uh, like beverages and stuff. They used some <laughs> 8400 GS, so that should be like G, G86 cars. Very interesting design, very interesting design. Yeah, and there will be some, some band playing in the evening and generally a nice event and also very impressive how huge this company is right now. Like how many employees they have, very impressive. <laughs> Ja, ich wollte schon immer mal so ein, so ein AX 161 haben. In dem Sinne, tschüss. Es war, es war le leichter als gedacht. Bis, bisher hat uns keiner aufgehalten. Der, der Weg zum eigenen Service sieht gut aus. Das hat funktioniert. <lacht> Ich habe gerade gesehen, ich habe ein Epic, also AX161, äh, ist definitiv ein Upgrade. Was ist hier passiert? It's now one day later. It was a very nice event. So thank you very much, Hanser, for having us there. It was their 25 five years anniversary of their company. And it's also quite impressive to see how huge they are like how many employees they have. I think it was like 200 to 300. So a lot of people and also um, just the way they act with people, like how they interact with their employees, how they're training them and everything was very nice to see. And uh, I think it's a very good example of how companies should behave in the IT industry. I think it's a very good place to work there. And that's especially for me, if you're um, advertising things, advertising companies, it's always good to get a better insight of what you're actually advertising for. That's why we are also like very happy to participate in such events. It's like not non-paid or anything, right? Uh, but it's just very good for us to get insights of what we're actually advertising for. And then you get just a better feeling of what you're doing. And obviously the part of uh, stealing the server was a joke, but I mean, we actually did it. We just took it from there and then we just passed security and everything. Nobody did stop us. <laughs> so that's actually quite hilarious. So if you're very confident and just do whatever you think uh, you want to do in that, in that moment, you can get away with it. Since I'm right now in the south of Germany, I decided to stop by Stefan, so Crazy85. And uh, he's a good friend of mine and we often bench together. You might know him from previous videos we did and he is currently doing some pre-testing for the HWBot challenge which we announced uh, several weeks ago. And yeah, I mean, that might look messy to you, but I can tell you, like, my old bench room <laughs> looked much worse than this, so that is, that is still, I would call it a bit organized, so yeah. The reason why I actually came here is uh, because I know, I knew he had Cop Zero, but it's not cold, right? But I also knew he had some dry ice here for benching. Perfect. But always remember if you do this, don't leave it in here for longer than I would call it like 20, 30 seconds. Otherwise it will just burst. And right now the stage he's testing for is with SuperPi 32M and fixed clock. I think it was limited to 6.5 gigahertz. And um, because we came up with an artificial memory clock limit of 4,800 mega transfers, that's why most of the overclockers figured out that they will have to switch to a DDR4 board and all of them are now running DDR4 because obviously with 4800 mega transfers it makes more sense to run tighter timings and then switch to DDR4 instead of DDR5. So that was like an additional challenge for the competition. Again, traveling back to Berlin and right now with those gas prices, I can tell you that's definitely not enjoyable. One day later I was traveling from Berlin to Cologne with the IC, which is basically a German train. And the one on the left was my train and it just broke down in the middle of nowhere. They tried to reboot it, so basically switch it on and off. And at the point where they tried to switch it back on again, it just didn't boot anymore, like it didn't work. So yeah, 
I was stuck there for several hours and then I made my way to Cologne again where I was uh, yeah, getting my new tattoo done because I'm still working on my entire arm and uh, yeah, it's a lot of time it takes and a lot of pain it takes. That's Chris, the tattoo artist who is working on my arm the entire time. We just blurred it because yeah, it's not really pleasant to look at. And the thing you can see there, like this face with some Goa Uld hieroglyphs on there, um, it's basically Nvidia Nalu which was a demo from 2006 with, I think it was, or 2009 with GeForce 6 demo. Day two, you can see the face of Nvidia Nalu is basically done. You can see the hieroglyphs of uh, Guaud over there. So pretty satisfied with how it came out. Still some work to do on like the top part, but the pain was just too much. So I had to stop in between and probably need a third day. Again, back in Berlin, the tattoo is already partially healed. Uh, will still take a few days until that uh, will be fine. There is one more thing. So a few, a few weeks ago, I ordered these EK fans at Case King, and uh, the like product number of these is like L U E K forty one. Then when I sent like the order to Case King because often they ship stuff to me, even though we're both in Berlin. Uh, I often still have them ship stuff to my house because it's uh, much simpler, and then. These arrived. Yeah, that is L U A K. Did a typo there, and now I'm proud owner of uh, three USB fans, which I don't need, but we're just giving them away. So if you want to participate in the giveaway of uh, simple USB fans, which might be cool because it's quite warm right now, then feel free to participate in the giveaway. You can find the link in the description below. You just have to enter your name and email address in the Google Forms, then we will do the giveaway. And in case you were hearing some weird background noises right now, that is because Makita is uh, having a good time playing with some toys. And like right next door, Sheik is sleeping on a box. Seems like this MSI chair is already a quite nice cat bed when it's just a box. But I think if we take it out of the box and assemble it, it should be even better for Sheik. So uh, sorry for video and audio quality partially in this video because we were quite a lot of time on the road and I didn't have the big camera with me and also not the good microphone which uh, retro retrospectively I'm regretting a bit because that is definitely much better so for the future we'll have to think about if I will just film with a phone again or if I will be able to find a better solution. Could you please not? It was actually also quite funny how we received this. I just uh, It just arrived at our door the other day, actually already like, I don't know, like a month ago. I didn't even know that they were sending anything to us. But I mean, you can straight figure that it's a chair by just the size of the box you're getting. And then like two or three weeks later, I asked them like, so what's the deal? Why did this arrive at our door? And I mean, they just send it to us so we can use it, test it, see if we like it or not. So thank you very much, MSI. Officer Sheik obviously has to inspect our work if everything was assembled correctly. Perfect. Those are the direct die mounting things I was talking about earlier. Uh, everything is based on the EK exact mount. So you will need this backplate, which will essentially replace the original ILM. That's why I also already removed this on here. And then you have this, what you could almost call like a direct die frame. Obviously the first step is putting our delete and prepared. So solder removed and everything prepared 1200K into the socket. Now you tighten up the entire thing which aligns the EK exact mount backplate and also tightens the CPU into the socket. It has a few limitations. Well, obviously it's for an EK block, so no limitation for EK, but you cannot use it with different coolers if you were thinking about that, for example. Uh, first limitation could be the thread they're using in the EK exact mount backplate. That is an, I think it's an M3. Could also be like M.25, but it should be M3. And then another key point is that you might see it this thing, like the direct die mount, is quite thick. 
It is definitely thicker than any normal direct die frame, so it doesn't allow to, to mount a normal cooler on it because the die is essentially sitting lower into the socket than this surface right here. And that's why you have these velocity two blocks, especially made for direct die cooling. You can see the center part is a bit elevated and this will fit perfectly onto the direct die frame and then make contact with the die. That's still a prototype, but that's going to be available very, very soon. And these are some of the EK products we're working on with them right now to give them a bit of help with testing and also guidance with the direct die cooling blocks and also especially for the deliter. Because right now I am fully aware that there is a the rocket cool deliter, but I'm also aware that there are cases where it's damaged CPUs because the way it works, it's pushing the IHS just to one side and quite far. And doing this, there is a certain risk that your CPU can be permanently damaged from that. That's just the only reason why we didn't make a 1700 deliter so far, because yeah, I don't want to be responsible for people breaking their CPU. So if there is a slight chance of breaking them, we are not releasing the products. It's as simple as that. And uh, we are now working on, I would say it's a pretty interesting mechanics of how you can delete a CPU. It will be very interesting once EK manufactured it, because if that's working out as we're planning, then that it's like, completely foolproof. There is no way you can damage your CPU with that. And that would be the goal. Once that's achieved, then I feel confident that we can bring it to the market. Even though it's quite late for all the lake, it should still work compatible with Raptor Lake. So it definitely makes sense to still work on it. All right. I hope you enjoyed this week, Doc. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.